Okay, uh, so <laughs> this is the same slide I had before. Uh, this is lecture four, uh, and I will be talking about change of basis coefficients today. Uh, remember that the goal was to introduce these symmetric functions that evaluate at ca to characters of the symmetric group and such that the structure coefficients are the Kronecker product. Uh, so uh, I wrote some uh, recap of things that I want you to remember for today's lecture. Uh, so if you have um, a permutation uh, in the symmetric group SN, and if it has psychotype mu, then its permutation matrix will have eigenvalues uh, that we are using this C letter uh, that I didn't realize how hard it is to write, uh, but it's easy to type. Uh, so you, here you have the psychotype, and basically it breaks into L uh, pieces, where each of the pieces uh, looks like a sequence, one row, row squared, up to row R minus one, where row is a primitive root of unity. Uh, sorry, this it should be R here. Um, so and <clears throat> so those are the eigenvalues. Uh, because you're going to be see, oh, seeing it a lot in all the formulas. So Mike, uh, in his lectures, told us three important things that I want you to remember today, is that if you have a symmetric polynomial in n variables, uh, you could think of it as a GLN character. So every symmetric polynomial in n variables is a, a character in the sense that it could be a virtual character. Like it doesn't have to correspond to a representation, uh, but it's kind of some uh, class function, if you like, for GLN. Uh, and he told us, he defined this function, right? That when you, uh, that the function depends on N and if you apply, uh, apply it to a polynomial, basically the coefficients here of the power symmetric function divided by the mu here, this is some numbers, right? This is a basis of symmetric functions. The coefficients turn out to be the evaluations of this uh, polynomial at the eigenvalues of permutation matrices. So if you use the whole inner product, that tells you that if you take uh, the inner product with P mu uh, of this function, you will get exactly these values. And here is like a little example, like a, here you have H11, which is this polynomial in three variables. And if you plug in the eigenvalues like one, 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 you will get nine because there are nine terms. If you plug in the eigenvalues for the two cycle, you will get one. And if you plug in the eigenvalues for the three cycle, which is the three roots of unity, you will get zero. Okay. Uh, so, and you could think you could, so here you have a GLN character or a GLN, uh, a, poly, a symmetric polynomial, and you obtain a class function of SN. So in principle, this function can be decomposed in terms of the irreducible characters or other bases for class functions of SN, and that's what we are interested in today. So my using this uh, function P of N, uh, he introduced three bases last time. Uh, one that evaluates uh, a, to what we, you, we will see are permutation characters. Uh, so, I, I'm not going to be, uh... oh, so I don't understand the questions, but there are some questions. No, there are not. You can, ah, you okay. can go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, sorry. Uh -huh. And another theorem is it, basically the way that we are going to use is that if we get an expression, right, that is true at all the uh, eigenvalues for all permutation matrices, then we are going to say that it is true at the level of symmetric functions. So we are going to be using this identity uh, in all our results. So the goal of today, uh, so that's where it begins, is we want to look at transition coefficients. And I don't know about you, but when I fell in love with this area of math, it was all the beautiful combinatorics that was coming out of the transition coefficients. They are counting all these beautiful sets. So um, I want to convince you that uh, there is a lot of beautiful combinatorics coming out out of this, okay? So <clears throat> in beautiful combinatorics that we hope will be able to explain, uh, you know, some 
uh, open problems, right? So if we take phi of n of h mu, right? Like from the previous page, we have h n minus mu, uh, mu, right? Like that's the way that Mike told us to define uh, uh, this h mu. So, uh, but this, if I, I rewrite it, this means that this is n mu, mu uh, equal to the sum, right? Of h gamma, so I'm just rewriting uh, like what I had in the previous page. This is H tilde, mu is a partition of N and here you have P mu, C mu. So that's uh, basically what it says. But if you remember uh, from uh, representation theory uh, of symmetric group, so theory of SN uh, or, uh, or if you uh, look at, uh, symmetric functions, a symmetric function book. So I would say here Sagan, right? Because that's where I learned this. And when I fell in love with this area it was because of this book. I, this is what we use in my class. Uh, so uh, this uh, number right here, right? So what are these numbers? Like these coefficients right here, right? Uh, this is gonna be H N minus gamma comma gamma i'll write it like this for now p mu right in general for any gamma uh, uh this is equal to the character of the permutation module and if you i'm gonna use the notation in sagan's book uh like he called them m uh, for every partition, he defines these permutation modules, and these are evaluated at a at sigma with psychotype mu. Okay, uh, so uh, some facts about this a mu right that are proved in Sagan's book is that for any lambda partition of n you know that a m lambda is isomorphic to the induced trivial representation from the young subgroup s lambda to s lambda l to s n so it, this uh, another fact that we know is that m lambda has a basis of polytabloids and what these are, these are sets of tableau, right? Where uh, uh, the set contains all the tableau that have the same numbers on the same row. And basically, uh, I'm going to do it by example. And, uh, you know, because I mean, it would take us like, you know, forever to do it justice uh, if you don't know it. But for instance, M3 is going to be the C span of all the tableau. Uh, that have uh, one, two, three in the same row. And uh, this is all the tableau with numbers on each, but this is the way that we denote it if we don't care the order in the row. Uh, M to one uh, is the C span of one, two, three, uh, one, three, two, uh, and two, three, one. And uh, M111 will be the C span of one, two, three. So these ones, and you get six of them, six, because in this case, nothing is in the same row, everything, six of them. So this is, has dimension six, this one has dimension three, and this one has dimension one. Uh, and if you want to compute the character, so these are permutation modules. So if you want to compute the character of this, is the trace, right? After you apply the permutation, right? And uh, so the trace of sigma, right? Uh, and this is equals to the number of fixed points, fixed elements or fixed tabloid, I should say better, fixed tabloid. Uh, by sigma. 
when you apply the permutation. So for example, you can construct a table. Uh, so choose a class representative, a two cycle, a three cycle, right? One, two, three. Uh, and here uh, you have the three to one, the irreducible representations. And if you compute a, it, this, you know, every permutation fixes this one, right? Uh, then this one, uh, you have three, uh, one, uh, zero, like the identity, right? Fixes all of them, right? One, two fixes only this one, and a uh, one, two, three doesn't fix anything, uh, any any of this. Uh, and this one is the, this in, turns out to always be the, uh, the regular, uh, regular uh, representation. So then this one is going to be the class function for this, this one is going to be the similarly as what Mike was doing for the S's. Uh, this, uh, you remove the first row and these are going to be what this evaluate at the eigenvalues uh, of each, okay? So we make the following definition uh, that H tilde lambda, like the function, right? Uh, is going to be uh, mu is just this. This is from Mike's definition, right? So these are the functions. So now we have a symmetric function, right? That uh, that satisfies. And the theorem that I want to prove uh, for you today is that if you choose an n very big, right? and lambda is any partition, then h mu h, mu, h lambda, sorry, I don't want to confuse the lambda mu, is equal to the sum over pi at a, so I'll just write it and then I'll explain all the notation. Um, M length of pi, M pi. So I'll explain everything, P mu, M, P mu, just P mu. So, or is equal to this H tildes that we are going to call them. So, uh, so let's try to understand what this means uh, with an perhaps with an example, right? Uh, do, you mean, do, uh -huh. you mean H, do you mean H tilde for lambda? No, I don't. On the left, so this, on the left. On this? No, 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 no. This is the homogeneous symmetric function when I evaluate it at eigenvalues, right? is going to be equals to this sum, where okay. these sums are going to be this H tildes. So I'm basically, uh, uh, so uh, let me explain the notation and you'll see uh, in a second. So this is the big theorem that I want to prove today and I'm going to do it combinatorially, okay? So, uh, so if you have a partition lambda, right? Uh, so, uh, so maybe, let's see. So let's do with an example what the notation means. So perhaps it's easy of the notation. Uh, uh, so let's say I have lambda is equals to two one. Uh, so then in this case, I'm going to have a multiset, like the multiset, I'm going to have two ones and a two, right? So that's what this part right here is saying, right? Uh, and let's, let's call this M, the multiset M, right? Uh, multiset partitions are like set partitions, but now they are multisets of multisets. So here are the multiset partitions of M. Like I'm going to write them all. Like you could put them all in one, right? Like each, so here the bars, right, break the multiset. So this is a multiset containing just one a multiset containing just one and a multiset containing just two, right? Uh, then I could put one and one together and two, 
right? So this is another way to break this multiset into parts. Then you have one, two, and one, and you can have all the elements in one single block, right? So what, are, what is this M right here? This M lambda are the multiplicities. So notice here that you get two, two multisets that are the same. So here uh, the M of this multiset would be two because there are two pieces that are the same and one that is different. This one, uh, the, the M is, you have two different multisets. So this is one of one kind and one of another kind. And here this M is one, one, and this is M is just one. So these are the corresponding multiplicities for each of these multisets. And this is what this M means. And what is this L, right? The L uh, of this is e the length, right? Is equals to three because there are three multisets here. The, the L here is two because there are two, you broke it into two multisets. This is two and then the length here is one, okay? So this explains all the notation right here, right? Uh, so as a corollary, right? Uh, if this is true based on what Mike told us, uh, like last time that if something is true for all partitions, right? Like th that theorem uh, for the evaluations is going to be true at the level of symmetric functions. This tells us that the, as a corollary, that H lambda for any lambda is going to be equals to the sum, right? Now asymmetric functions of M of pi, uh, pi, uh, uh, a set partition of this. So like that, okay? So for example, right? If I wanted to write a, a M, I don't know where that came from. Uh, maybe because H is dual to M. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you want to write H of two one, right? This would be equals to uh, H uh, of, so you go back and you look at all the possible multiplicities that you can get to one plus H tilde of one one plus H tilde of one one plus h tilde of one, right? Or in other words, h tilde of two one plus two times h tilde of one one plus h tilde of one, okay? So like that. So this gives us a way, uh, this is asymmetric functions now, right? This is the change of basis and something that you might notice that we will uh, point out later, right, is that uh, the H, so from here you can see that the H tildes are, a ba uh, are going to be a basis because the change, uh, uh, these ones, look, you, if you have a, uh, a lambda here, you will always have H tilde of lambda, right, as the leading one plus things of a smaller uh, partition, smaller partitions, right, of a smaller size. So that, so you get a triangularity relationship between the two bases. So then you can uh, you can see that this is indeed a basis. But let's con let's prove the theorem. So the proof of the of this theorem, right? So uh, so what do I have to uh, prove, right? I have to prove uh, that if I evaluate the homogeneous symmetric functions at eigenvalues of permutation matrices, in particular one of cycle type mu, this is equal to these numbers, right? So uh, we are going to do it by counting because, you know, algebraic combinatorics, right? We are going to count on both sides. So why does counting make sense here? So let's, uh, so the proof of the theorem. Right? Uh, so we make the following observation, right? Note that in the right-hand side, right? Uh, we are, we sum only non-negative integers. only non-negative integers, right? So the, uh, because remember, so that these numbers right here, so here is like the table. So they are all, so this table always has non-zero uh, non integer, uh, non-negative integers. So 
So that you can have zeros, that's clearly here. But this is just counting numbers of fixed points for each of the different uh, uh, permutation modules. So, and these are equal to these inner products right here. So then, uh, so here you just, you're adding just a non-zero uh, or a non-negative integers, right? So this is always positive, right? Uh, so it's going to be counting something. So, uh, so we want to show, so the idea of the proof is to show that uh, both sides count uh, sets of the same size. So it's kind of one of those very like beautiful, I think, proofs. So let's begin. So when we began doing this, we went through almost all the books that we knew and we found this lemma in a book. Well, it's a proposition in that book. It's a book by Lascaux. And in this book, which one can check, like if you take any uh, integer r greater or uh, greater or equal to uh, one, uh, you have h of zero uh, is equal to one uh, here r, right? And if you do for h n, right? If you evaluate it, just a you know, kind of these values, right, are the are roots of unity. Uh, this gives you delta. This is the Kronecker delta uh, that R divides N. So this gives you one if R divides N and it gives you zero otherwise, okay? So, uh, so this was the lemma. So one generalizes it. So we do two generalizations. First, we generalize the inside to do like multiple cycles, right? So, and the, uh, something, you know, that follows from symmetric functions is that if, for instance, if you evaluate it at psi mu, this is going to be the number of weak compositions alpha of n uh, such that, uh, so with uh, the length of mu equals to the length of la alpha, and such that mu i divides alpha i for all i, like all the corresponding parts. Uh, so, and this is because of this condition right here, okay? So uh, how, why is this? Uh, so maybe a quick example so that you can see uh, uh, kind of what we are saying. So for instance, if you wanted to compute side of mu to one, for example, right? This is going to be two. And this is a y, right? Because here mu is equals to two, one, right? Uh, and so we want weak compositions of the number two, right? Uh, so the possible weak compositions are two, zero, zero, two. Uh, so weak composition means that you allow zeros, right? And one, one, right? So those are all the possible weak compositions of the number two. Uh, and now you have to check that, uh, for instance, that the two divides two, right? And uh, one divides zero. So this one works, uh, two divides zero and uh, one divides two. So this works, but then two does not divide one. So this one doesn't work. And that's why you get two as opposed to uh, uh, three in this case. Uh, so so how do, does one prove Proof, uh, what is the proof of this thing? It follows from an identity from symmetric functions that if you have many alphabets, x1, x2, xr, right? And you uh, want to write it, right? You expand this. Uh, this expands as alpha, a weak composition of n, uh, length of alpha equals to r, a h alpha one, x1, uh, H alpha R A X R like so it decomposes like this so th this is a whole so now replace uh, for each X I you replace psi of mu I right 
Uh, so then here you have HN is going to be side of mu, right? Is equal to uh, the sum over the same things, alpha, a weak composition of N, length of alpha equal to uh, length of mu now, right? Because that's how many alphabets you have. And then here you have the product of H alpha I, uh, mu I, like that, I going from one to the length of mu. Uh, and now we make the following observation because this is a counting, right? That this is equal to one if uh, mu I divides alpha I, right? Uh, and zero otherwise. So the only one, the only compositions that will contribute are precisely the ones that satisfy the, this condition, right? That's what it's saying. And it is a counting. So it's counting. It gives you one for each such composition. You get one. So then uh, that proves this result, okay? So that's kind of the proof. Uh, so now uh, we want to generalize this, right? Uh, so the, the next proposition, right? tells us that uh, a, ah, maybe I make a definition before the proposition. I'm going to define a set, C lambda mu, because I want to refer to it later. Uh, the, uh, the, a sequence of compositions that all satisfy this property, lambda two, right? So all possible sequences, length of lambda, like that, uh, like that, uh, such that, that satisfied all these conditions, that alpha i is a, comp a weak composition of lambda i. Uh, we want the length of alpha i to be equal to the length of mu. And we want uh, that mu i device, alpha, mu j, sorry, device alpha j mu i for all uh, j. Uh, uh, so this uh, this is a sequence, and the reason is because I want to say the proposition, right? I want to say that H lambda psi mu is equal to the size of this set. So it's counting these weak compositions, right? The sequences of weak compositions that satisfied all these conditions, uh, and the proof is by the product principle in combinatorics and the fact that h lambda is equals to h lambda one, h lambda two up to h lambda l, right? So it follows by the product principle, like, uh, so kind of pretty easy, <laughs> okay? So now we move to the other side, right, of the theorem, right? And in the other side of the, th so now on the, on the right-hand side in the theorem, so this is tells, told us what the right-hand side of the theorem is counting, oops, right? Is counting uh, the, the elements in this set. And I want to show that the right-hand side in the theorem, right, in the right-hand side of theorem, we are summing things that look like this, H, n minus lambda comma lambda uh, p mu, right? Like we are things that look like this. So let's give this a combinatorial interpretation. We knew that this is the character of m n minus lambda comma lambda, right? Uh, the permutation uh, module, right? At sigma of psychotype mu. Right, that's what this number is. It's a non-negative integer, right? But this is equals to the number of tabloids of shape n minus lambda, lambda, right? That are fixed by this sigma of this type, right? By the sigma, this sigma that we are chosen of type mu. So, uh, so we make the following note, right? That if we write, if sigma is in psycho notation, right? So let's, then sigma fills, uh, fixes a tabloid 
if and only if, right? Each cycle uh, permutes only elements in the same row, right? Because if you permute them in the same row, they stay fixed. So then uh, perhaps, you know, I, I debated it. So I'm just gonna do an example so that you see what this thing is counting. Uh, so let's say that Lambda is equal to force. Unfortunately, one has to choose the, <laughs> the numbers relatively small because otherwise, uh, so here, let's say that mu is equals to three, three, two, two, one, one, right? So this is the cycle type of the permutation. So, and for, uh, you know, kind of, uh, let's say that it is this permutation, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So I'm even writing the one cycle so that you see. So then I, the polytabloids right now, right? They are going to have a very long row with 12 entries. So here in, you have N minus four and you have four entries here, right? In the bottom right here, because the lambda is going to look like uh, N minus four, four, but maybe not lambda, but uh, a, the, a, the augmented lambda, right? So you have N minus four, four, that's the shape, right? We always have like this part right here, okay? So you have eight entries on the first row and four on the second one. So which tablo tabloids are fixed, right? So, well, if one, two, three is in the same, right? I can put one, two, three, and I could put 11, right? On the second row, and this is fixed. And here I put all the remaining other elements. So I'm going to write all the elements that get fixed. So one, two, three, and 12, right? Another one that gets fixed is uh, four, five, six, and eleven. Uh, uh, you uh, four, five, six, and twelve. Uh, the the other one uh, is uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. The two 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 cycles, right? Uh, here uh, I'm going to have seven, eight. 11 and 12, or I could have 9 and 10, 11 and 12. So these are the all the polytabloids. There are seven. So in this case, the character for this data is going to be seven. Yeah, okay, I have them all. Uh, so, but then I could, these ones, I could uh, correspond it to a tableau that is filled with zeros and ones as follows. So I write the mu, right? Like this. And, and I can put, so for instance, this would be, I use one, one, one. So this is the first cycle and I use 11, which is this. And then I'm putting zeros on all, uh, on all the other ones, but I don't write them because it's too much writing. Uh, then I would put a uh, here, right? Like this one would correspond under this, right? To this tableau, uh, one, 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 uh, and one, right? And this one, I'm not gonna draw the boxes anymore. It's gonna, it's the same shape. So this is shape mu, right? Which is the type, right? And it's basically indicating, uh, so basically how the cycles are breaking according to the rows. So here I have, uh, a, maybe I have to write the tableau. So I would put one, one, one here, right? And I would have here uh, one, right? And then I'm also going, to, for this one, I'm going to have one, 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 right? And I'm gonna put the one here. And for this one, I'm going to have the uh, a one, 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 right? Like that. And for this one, I'm going to have um, a, so this one is one, one, one. And then this last one, right? 
is one one. Did I do I have them correctly? Yes. You missed the one for the last bet one. Huh? You missed the one uh, for the last box, the box before the last one. Seven, eight, eleven, twelve. Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because that's why it, was, it wasn't computing. <laughs> like I was like, oh, I'm missing something. Okay, so then it could risk. So then I can match these ones, right? And basically it's telling me uh, row two, right? Like the one indicates, right? Like this entry. And if there were others, you would have twos and threes and fours. And then the empty boxes are filled with zeros, right? So then uh, the proposition, right? Based on this example, right? Uh, is that H N minus lambda lambda P mu right is equal to the number of tableau of shape mu uh, where rows are filled with same number right it, it like same number and you are using using zero one uh two up to length of lambda right or many length in this case we only had ones because the length of lambda was one and t has constant zero to the n minus lambda right there this many zeros lambda one ones Etc. and the L, L, like that, okay? So that's, those are the numbers that, uh, so that's what this is, right? And it is just this projection of what gets fixed, right? And understanding what fixes uh, the, the tabloids, okay? So then, uh, so on the right-hand side of the theorem that I want to prove, remember, uh, it looks like this. The sum over pi, right? Like I'm not gonna write all the details, but because you can go back and look at it, but it looks like this, right? Length of pi are the number of multisets, right? In the in pi, and then in pi is the multiplicities, right? And then p mu. So this is, but then we have given an interpretation for each of these, right? So I'm going to maybe. Uh, so we want. So we want to keep track. Right, because you, in principle, you could have uh, different uh, multiset partitions giving you the same data here, right? So then we want to keep track of all the different ones, and to do that, and let me show you with an example how we do it, right? So with an example, right? Uh, so suppose that lambda is equals to twelve, seven, and two, and I have a set partition of one, two, one, two, one, two. One, 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 two, two, three, one, two, two, three, uh, and one, right? So this is the multiset partition. So if we write the multiplicities, right? There are three that are uh, one, two, so three. There are two that are one, one, one. There are two that are one, two, two, three, right? And there is one, but I don't want to forget, right? That this three was actually corresponding to one, two, and that this two was corresponding to uh, one, 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 right? And that this two is corresponding to one, two, two, three, right? And that this one is corresponding to the multiset one. So I want to keep that data. So when I interpret this, right? So for instance, n minus eight, right? Notice that there are eight multisets in pi, right? Uh, m pi a of p mu, right? This is gonna be equal to the number of tableau, like in the same way that we did, but now we are keeping the data because there is going to be one for each possible set partition, like in this sum, right? Uh, the number of tableau t of shape mu, uh, where, N minus eight boxes are filled with empty, or we just don't write it, right? 
three are filled with the multi set one, two, two are filled with one, 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 and two and uh, two are filled with uh, one, two, two, three, and one is filled with uh, just one. So that's kind of like the way that we want to be. And all rows have same multiset, have same multiset as before, because we are basically keeping track of that cycle fixing that piece, right? Multiset. Uh, so I define the set T lambda mu, right? To be a, the set of all tableau T uh, of, of this kind. For uh, a, every a pi, right? A multi set of one lambda one, two lambda two, uh, L lambda L. So they satisfy this condition that all the rows have the same multi set and they are filled with the multi set parts. Okay. Uh, so then it follows, well, right? Well, uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. I'm just trying to be a little bit picky here. You have used this notation earlier too. In this one, you have J lambda mu. Uh, it appears like you're multiplying lambda and mu. Maybe you'd like to use the notation lambda. Where? I don't understand. J, this is T. Yeah, the notation lambda times mu, it appears like multiplication. So is it lambda? I, with a comma? It's two yeah. partitions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's two part for any two partitions, right? We can define, uh, you know, all the the set that contains all this tableau, right? Uh, so and for any fixed partition, is counting one of these. So this tells us that this side, right, is uh, if I take n minus length of pi, m of pi, right? Uh, P of mu, right? Like this is equals to this, to the to this T of lambda mu, right? Like a, that's what it's counting. So now the claim, right? Because it was a combinatorial proof, right? Is that a, a, there is a bijection from this T lambda mu to see the weak compositions, remember, that were counted by the other side. And we do a proof by example, right? Because once you see the example, you're going to go like, oh, yeah. So let's see, 12, uh, 7, 2, uh, mu equals to 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, OK? Uh, and I'm going to take the set partition, the same one that I had right here. So I'm going to write it here, this one. The same set partition. It's the same data uh, copy, and I'm going to put it here. So I don't have to, right. So this is the set partition. Uh, so then, for example, uh, a, you can have the tableau uh, one two one two one two, uh, and uh, and I'm going to leave the boxes empty, the ones corresponding to the empty set. So I have like that. I have two that are size two and one box of size one. So for example here, right, this is the only way I can put one because it has to occur and I have, I can put the one, 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 one here and I one, two, two, three, one, two, two, three, right? Like that. So this is the tableau and I have to construct from this a sequence of weak compositions. So the way that I do is I'm going to have in this case three because kind of there are three parts here, right? A lambda. Uh, alpha i d is going to be equals to the number of labels d in the i row of d, right? So for example, if I do alpha one, right, is going to be equals, there are three ones in the first row, zero in the second, two in the third one, uh, six in the fourth one and one, I think, yeah. 
And notice that this is a composition, a weak composition. I keep, keep, keep confusing these symbols. Weak composition of, oh, why, what did it do? I, how do I remove this? Okay. Uh, this is a weak composition of 12, which is equals to lambda one. If you do alpha two, right? Now you count the numbers of twos, three, zero, uh, four, uh, zero, zero. And this is a weak composition of uh, seven, which is equals to lambda two. And alpha three is equals to uh, zero, zero, two, zero, zero, which is a weak composition of two, which is lambda three. And notice that all these numbers, all these numbers are divisible by mu one, which is equals to three, right? All these numbers in this column are divisible by mu two, which is equals to three. All of these ones are divisible by two, which is lambda three. These ones are divisible by mu four, which is two. And these ones are divisible by mu five, which is equals to one. And they all have you know, a length, a, a clearly length, uh, all the weak compositions have the right length, which is the length of L mu. So anyways, uh, so it, it works. So they are in bijection. So it, this proves or this bijection proves the theorem. The theorem. So now, right, uh, we have uh, that H lambda, right? So the corollary that we had is that H lambda, right? The homogeneous symmetric function is always equals to H lambda plus the sum, right? Over all gamma, gamma less than lambda, right? So it cites A lambda gamma H gamma tilde, right? Where A lambda gamma is equals to the number of set part is a multi set partitions of one lambda one L lambda L, right? With uh, gamma equals to M of pi, okay? So uh, it gives us this uh, beautiful way of seeing, and this is, uh, also help us see the triangularity relation. So this gives us the basis H lambda, right? Is a basis for the ring is a is non-homogeneous, right? A non-homogeneous basis for the ring. So in Mike also told us uh, in his talk that H mu tilde is equals to the sum of lambda less than or equal to mu of the Costa numbers, right? N minus lambda comma lambda. Uh, n minus mu comma mu s tilde mu, right? So uh, these are the transition coefficients. These numbers right here are the cost uh, numbers, right? And they count cost cut tableau, right? Which are, uh, this is equals to the number of tableau, uh, column strict or semi-standard young tableau, right? Of shape, uh, n minus lambda, lambda, and par n content, right? Like the number of, the numbers that occur, right? n minus mu, mu, right? So, uh, and when, when n is greater than two times lambda, greater or equal probably, uh, then uh, this k n minus lambda, lambda uh, n minus mu mu does not depend on n, the number that you get on n. Uh, so this in, implies, right, like as we knew that this is all is a basis, right? So we are going to use in the following theorem, we are going to use this notation that the bar removes the first part of the partition Right, so the theorem, uh, the next theorem, right, 
is the other transition coefficient. So the other theorem says that for any partition mu of any size, H mu, the homogeneous symmetric function, is equal to uh, lambda, such that lambda bar is less than or equal to mu uh, m lambda mu s tilde uh, lambda s tilde lambda bar. Right, where m lambda mu is equals to the number of semi-standard Young tableau of a, of a skew shape lambda over a lambda two um, field uh, with multi-set with a multi-set a multi-set partition pi of uh, uh, one lambda one, two lambda two, uh, L lambda L. So that is counting this, it's kind of like the Koska look, when you write them uh, in uh, like, these are like the Koska, but with multisets instead of numbers, like the Koska numbers uh, have numbers in them. Here we have uh, multisets in them. So in we uh, here we're talking about semi-standard young tableau. So we are going to use lexicographic order, for example, on graphic order on multisets, right? To be able to say one is greater than the other because we are using tableau. So I want to do uh, some exam examples of this theorem. So the mm -hmm. proof is uh huh. Uh -huh. In this definition, m lambda mu, uh, the on the right hand side, where is the mu? Uh, the mu is here. No, I mean in the definition of m m lambda mu. Ah, right thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, mu one. Mu l. Yeah, in the type. <laughs> Is telling us how many ones, how many twos, etc. Okay. So let me do the example, then you'll see. So let's say I want to write H2, right, in terms of the S tilde. So this tells me that I have a multiset with two ones because I only have one part, right? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to artificially, so that it makes sense, I'm going to artificially put a long row and I can have the, uh, this tableau fill with this multi-set of one one, or I could put the two ones together, or I could do uh, one one, or I could put the one one together, or I could do uh, one like this. And these are all the possibilities that you can do with the, this small multi-set. So this tells me, right, that H2, now I've removed the first row, right? So you kind of remove the first row of all the tableau, right? Uh, and this is gonna be S tilde, two S tilde, right? You get two empties, you get uh, two S tilde one plus uh, S tilde two, okay? So what if you wanted to do H uh, one one, for example, right? Uh, so now your multiset is one one and one two, right? So in this case, right, so again, you artificially put a long row to keep track of, of a skew, otherwise things look the same. So you have this, or you could put them together in the first row, right? Here you have, uh, you could put one, two together like that, or you could put them separately, like one, two, but now you can also put them in the opposite order, one and two, right? Uh, then here you have, uh, you could put one, and two like that, but and you can also do one and two right here, okay? So now you come and you chop the first row, right, of all of them, and then you say that H11 is equals to two S tilde empty plus three S tilde one plus uh, S tilde two 
plus S tilde one one. Okay. Uh, the proof of the theorem, as Mike said, right, it, it uses the theorem that I proved, right? Uh, so you first write the H lambda, right, in terms of the uh, H tilde, a H tilde mu, right? And then after this, you write the H tildes in terms of the S tildes, which use the costa, right? So oh, maybe I use a different letter. Uh, and so then uh, the coefficients turn out to be a pair, right? When you do this combination, right? A pi and a tableau, right? And every time that you have this, right? So this is a, a, a column strict tableau. So, and then you have here, I, I don't know why this is appearing. Uh, and this is a set part, uh, a multi-set partition. So every time that you have this, you can combine them together, right? And create a single tableau, right? A tableau, a column strip tableau, right? Uh, filled with multiset, filled with uh, the multisets in Pi. Uh, so let me be a little example, right? One, one, two, for example. And this tableau right here has all ones in the first row, uh, and then two, three, right? This becomes the multiset with empty, all the ones become empty, right? And then these are in order, right? Uh, uh, lexicographically, so you one, one, two, it becomes this uh, tableau, for example. And, you, and uh, so, anyways, I think uh, I, Maybe I only say the next theorem so that you see, and then uh, because this is kind of, uh, I guess, uh, it's going to give you kind of like an idea of what the difficulty, like how things can get a bit more challenging, because uh, this is kind of like uh, the, you know, kind of one of the easy ones. But if we can write the emus, for example, the the elementary symmetric functions, right? Uh, they also have uh, positive numbers, right? S tilde, uh, lambda. This comes from uh, the representation theory of the general linear group, uh, lambda bar uh, less mu, right? Where n lambda mu, right, is equals to the number of tableau t a, of shape. You do the same thing, uh, lambda slash lambda two, right? Uh, it's a skew shape, uh, weekly increasing in rows and in columns. So it's not anymore uh, strictly in columns, in columns two. It weekly increases, so they are not column strict. Uh, a field with sets. So now you don't have, you don't, in the parts of the multiset, you don't allow repetition. So for instance, one, and if you have two ones, the two ones cannot occur on the same set. And this is kind of the interesting thing is there is a parity going on, only even sets, such say a repeat in rows and only odd sets repeat in columns. And perhaps one very little example so that you see, and then we can stop to one, right? So in this case, the multiset, there are two ones and a two, right? And I want to fill tableau that satisfy this condition. So I'm going to artificially put this long row and I can have one and one, two, right? And, and that's it because it the each of the entries have to be a set. Then here, I can have one here and one, two here, or I could have one, two here and one, and I could have also one, two, right? And one here, and that's it for that shape. And then here I can have one, and I could have one, two here as usual, like column strict, but I could also have 
one one because the ones can repeat they are sets of size one so i could have a two here or i could have uh the last one is one and one two and then uh, here i could also have uh one and one two and i also can have uh oh sorry uh one two uh and one here and there are only two more so you see how you get a lot more in this case uh one one two or you could have also uh one one two because the ones can repeat on the column now you come and you is remove the first row from everything right because it was kind of artificially there and then this tells me that e to one is equals to s tilde empty plus three s one tilde one plus uh, s tilde this one is three two uh, one one plus two s tilde two plus s tilde two one plus s tilde one 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 okay and i'll stop there uh, the, the proof is a bit similar you do a counting uh and there is a way to to give an interpretation in terms of counting right and uh but uh i'll just stop because i'm right at time <laughs> i only yes. cut it like five pages <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. Very nice talk. Okay. Any questions? Uh, yeah, Rosa. Is there is there a way to know the number of distinct terms that appear on the right hand side of this elementary expansion? Elementary oh, expansion. Expansion. You mean just counting like uh, the sum of the coefficients? two questions you can ask one is the sum of the coefficients the other one is the distinct numbers for instance ah, like the support the size of the support yeah one two three four five six in this case mm, yeah i haven't thought about that but those are very nice questions because even the support right like i mean just mm. finding mm. what the support is uh so i guess the first question would be how many different terms are in the support yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I could show you in like, you know, <laughs> Sage a few examples, but uh, yeah, I haven't thought about that. I like your uh, proof with examples. Very helpful. Oh, yeah, because I debated a lot. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> what would make sense? Because I was doing proof and then doing examples. And then I said, do a proof, proof. A slash example. <laughs> <laughs> Combine both. <laughs> Proof by example. <laughs> so. Any other questions? All right, I don't see anyone raising their hands. So let's thank Rosa again. Thank you so much. It's a really great talk. Um, so next week, because of FIPSAC, we are not going to have any um, lectures, but we'll um, be back on the 25th. And I think that would be Mike's turn to teach us more about this paper. Yeah, so I would like to say Mike is gonna be talking about Kronecker, right? Like how can we use this to make progress towards Kronecker? And I, in my last talk, I will talk about connection back to partition algebra, like the Murnaham Nakayama type rule when you multiply PK times S tilde. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. I will see you guys um, in two weeks. Or see you in fifth sec. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you there. Bye. Bye. Bye.